I'd like to focus for a few minutes as we close uh, on this day and on what's been reflected on as we've read this uh, passion uh, narrative. I want us to get back to the Palm Sunday introduction where we started today. And think about the path and where that, how that all started and led us to even where we are now at this time, having read through the passion of Jesus Christ. And as you look at that road in Matthew 21, it's a very uh, familiar road. And it says right there in uh, uh, Matthew 21, 1, uh, that uh, it says they approached Jerusalem, came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, and this is a road that Jesus and his disciples had walked many, many, many times. And as he'd walk around that, uh, that bend around the Mount of Olives, you'd see the city of Jerusalem. And at this time and place, thousands upon thousands of people were gathered to celebrate the Passover. This was a regular occurrence. And, and this road was a familiar road. And so here are Jesus and his disciples approaching Jerusalem, uh, turning, turning that road along the Mount of Olives. And I want you to think about familiar roads for a minute. And think about the paths that you go on. And uh, I always kind of imagine, what would it look like if I could look from above? And uh, you know how they have those high-speed, fast-forwarded kind of videos and stuff that would show my route every week and the different roads I take. Uh, for me, <laughs> it's about a four, five, six mile <laughs> kind of route that I'm generally on. Would you, do you, you kind of have your general routes planned out, don't you? And if you, you were to see it and fast forward, what do you think it would show? Just kind of that <laughs> zigzag back and forth? Uh, not true for all of you. I know uh, some, some that uh, travel a lot for your work, man, it could be literally circling the globe, right? Dave Kramer, recently in France, right? Maybe others of you have traveled some long distances this week uh, for work or other things, and you've gone different places. But for many of us, and then if you get down to your regular routes, it's that kind of familiar path, right? You could just about, I don't recommend this, but you could almost close your eyes and set your car on autopilot and just go. And it sounds like that day may be coming soon, too, for those kind of vehicles, right? So familiar roads. You expect normal things. These are the things that happen. Even in Jesus' time, this was a normal thing. This was the Passover that was going to occur. And many of our roads are the same. And if we looked at our lives, we'd find some similar things that we do, whether it's kids and school or work or grocery store, this errand here, family. Yeah, we, we kind of get it. We kind of get those paths. But then each of us really, if we, when we look a little closer, we each have a very unique journey, don't we? that we take through life. And as I look out, I know there have been many normal things that have happened in your life, but I know there have been some pretty significant detours as well, where the path, the regular routes are going, and then all of a sudden, wow, I didn't expect that left turn, or I didn't expect that U-turn, or I didn't expect that long country road where I didn't even know where I was going, and it was like dark, it was getting dark. And these things come in the form of illness. These things come in the form of unexpected losses, financial setbacks, uh, family challenges, uh, school-related steps and missteps and, and uh, the things that we don't see for all of us, whether we're young or old. And through these times, we need the Lord and we need each other. And I love the way that the disciples had this journey with Jesus, right? They were together. They were with Jesus, and he was leading the way. I'd like to invite uh, Sarah Martinez to come up, and as I thought about this kind of short message, I thought it'd be great to have a, a testimonial. And uh, uh, Sarah is one, as you saw earlier, uh, Sarah is one that uh, leads one of our life groups, she and her husband, Dave. And uh, I don't know, I just wanted to encourage you to kind of get a glimpse here of what, uh, of what goes on in a life group. Some of you are part of one. Uh, but how that kind of combines together, that thought of walking together and walking with Jesus 
and how those things are so intertwined. If you look at the next, uh, next uh, uh, picture, uh, here's a path. <laughs> and this is like one of those paths. I thought about the roads that we go on, the paths we go on. Uh, Sarah, in fact, was on this path, I think, just recently, maybe even yesterday, yesterday. okay, yep. with a friend. And um, uh, think about the journeys. Here's another picture of uh, Sarah and one of the members of her life group. Is Ginger here today? I think yeah, I saw her today. Right there. there she is. But they were on this path and this uh, life group walk is part of that path that they're on together. But just a couple of thoughts, Sarah, as you think about, uh, um, uh, I know, life and I know we've talked through many different seasons of life and changes and challenges, that, of course, that you've experienced. But uh, thinking about life groups, why are life groups, uh, have they been significant to you or... How has it been a blessing? Yeah, absolutely. So we were in a life group, my husband and I, at our first church. That was when we got engaged. We actually um, were in a group for several years, um, had our daughter with another couple, and our daughter is now 18, and we're still friends with those same families. Um, and it just was a great connection. Um, but then recently, when Pastor John asked if we would host a life group, we were always in one. We never hosted one, and we were a little bit nervous. It kind of put us out of our comfort zone. We're like, well, what do we have to do? What do we have to prepare? And it ended up just being um, a great experience. It's been a great experience for us. Um, one of the things that we love is um, <clears throat> having a interruption in our week to meet with other Christian couples and being able to spend some time. Uh, we come on Sunday, but we also love, you know, having that, that interruption during the week. But then we've just been blessed with uh, Ginger and Dennis, who are here today, and we have Arlene and David, who are in the other campus. Their daughter actually was um, involved in a lot of things. Our daughter, they're both the same age, they're in college right now, and we'd never spend any time with them. And then all of a sudden, they're in our group, and it was just, we got to know them better, and, it's funny, our groups, it starts at 6.30, and we do just, um, just fellowship until 7, and then from 7 to 8, we do a study, um, and it's hard to leave at 8 o'clock, you know, we're still talking, and we're still, you know, we're just connecting. It's just a great experience, and we've, we've felt really blessed so far. We've, we've loved our group, and um, we have one more of this study, and then we'll hopefully look at another study that pertains to all of us and continue the group. So I think you've said a few reasons, but go ahead and show the next picture there. There's a picture of their group, and then I had the privilege of joining them uh, one uh, uh, yes. Thursday night. Yeah, Thursday you night did. That you're uh -huh. But uh, why should somebody be a part of a life group, do you think? And you shared a little bit about that, but what would be a reason, one reason why you think? Well, we have seasons in our lives, as everybody knows, and I, um, I feel like being connected with couples and, and people First of all, it gives you a chance to pray for one another and to support one another because we know we all go through difficult times. And, and so I think that's a huge reason. I think another one is that you'd be surprised at what you have in common. I mean, Ginger and I, this is our second hike that we ha have done and it's just been so fun. And we, we hate our hikes to end because, I mean, we're just talking and hiking. All of a sudden it's eight miles and we're just like, wow. Um, so it's, it's connecting outside of our group, connecting with our group. Um, Dennis and David talking March Madness, you know, and then the other David, he's a mountain biker. So it's, it's amazing what you learn about one another, and it's just, it's support. And we're all at a point in our lives, our particular group, which is neat, that we have kids that are out of high school. They've, they've gone through the whole Christian walk, and they're out of high school, and they're in college. And so I feel Ginger and Dennis are helpful for us as <clears throat> we're navigating to college right now. And I know that David and Arlene are appreciative because they've got a sophomore in college. And so we just can, we, it's almost like we can, um, we can just trust each other and help each other get through these seasons in our lives. So it's been really great about that too. Well, thank you, Sarah. Let's give Sarah a hand. Thank you for having <laughs> the courage to come on up. And uh, I love that testimonial. And uh, even as we were talking, that, that path that they were on. As I think about, again, the path of Palm Sunday, I think about the paths of life and those familiar roads, those unique roads, how much uh, better it is to walk together with another brother, with another sister down these paths that we go, that we go down, some familiar, some unexpected. And my invitation for you as you head into this Holy Week, yes, I'd encourage you to join, join a life group. That would be a great thing as we start them after Easter as well. But uh, I encourage you to take this season and this week and this time to walk closer with Jesus. 
Maybe there's some added disciplines of prayer, of of worship that we can join together in worship on these holy uh, worship services, Thursday, Friday, and of course on on Easter Sunday. Um, And continue to, that's ways that we can both walk uh, with the Lord and walk with one another as we're doing even today. And think about the Savior that we have. And as I think again on this passage from Matthew 21 for today, as Jesus entered Jerusalem, he gave his disciples some pretty specific and interesting instructions on what to do. And there was really no wavering. He promised them uh, what was, what was going to happen. And there's nothing that was going to deter Jesus from his goal. As, he, as we read in Matthew 21, um, uh, we read uh, him, for him to say, uh, untie, go, go to the village. Once you'll find a donkey tied there with her colt by her, untie them, bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, Tell them that the Lord needs them, and he'll send them right away. Uh, The disciples are thinking, uh, okay, these like animals don't just come cheap. You're just going to take this animal and just, they're going to be okay with that? And just think about the the determination, the the focused uh, persistence of Jesus to say this is going to happen. He was set. He was determined. He was unwavering in his goal, and he said these things will happen. And the disciples, I can almost see them looking, okay, Jesus, we'll do this. I mean, something's happening here. Something's gonna go in a way that we don't know what's gonna happen next, but Jesus is set, and there's nothing that will deter him from his goal. And as they went along, and as that all unfolded, and as the, as the parade, the procession happened, and the palm branches and the cloaks are laid down, as the people said again, let's see if you still have your, Cross with me, raise it up one more time and shout out with me. One, two, three. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Great job in the back, guys. Something was happening. It's like like uh, someone who's determined and focused on their goal. There's nothing that will stop them from what is going to go and what is bound to happen. And going through the crowd, the people noticed, as we see at the end of the reading from Matthew 21, verses 10 and 11, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. God is faithful He showed that clearly in Jesus, the one who went to the cross for you and for me. He has been there for us. And as you walk down this road ahead of us, whatever life will continue to bring in this next week or weeks ahead, he will not fail. Invite him in, travel with Jesus down this holy week and expect God to reveal himself, to show up perhaps in a way that maybe is unexpected or a path that you're gonna take that maybe is far from what you had anticipated, but God said, okay, God, if you're leading me, if this is what you desire for me to do, I'm gonna walk down that path. I'm gonna go down that direction. I'm gonna be reconciled with that other person. I'm gonna give forgiveness to that person that maybe doesn't need it. I'm gonna go through the direction that you have for me that's maybe a, a walk or maybe a, a, a pursuing a, a something in life that I hadn't thought about But if you're going to be with me, it can be done. It can be done in your name. A familiar road or maybe a a journey that's going to take you down a different path. God's going to be faithful. So I invite you to pray with me as we uh, follow through and down the road, down the journey, down the path that the Lord has for us. We know one who has gone before us. We see one in Jesus as we've read already today, who has even suffered death on a cross. 